This is the Witch Hunter Inquisitor made by Games Workshop in 2003. It might not look like much, but I love old models like this. Old models have roots. They're full of fun stories, and I learned some really fun things researching this lady. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. It is quite possible that the Inquisition is the most 40k thing about 40k. Sure, there's orcs and elves and whatever Tau is, but what makes 40k as a setting is what the humans are up to. And having read these two books, it ain't good. In the early 2000s, 40k had transitioned out of Rogue Trader and solidified as a fully fledged universe. And now that all the pieces were in place, the world was being fleshed out and these books told the story of humanity. 40k is a tragedy. With the Emperor, love him or hate him, basically out of the picture, humanity turned to religion. Cranked that dial up to 11, snapped it off, dunked it in holy water, and then prayed to it. There are two, count them, two codexes for the Inquisition. And this one, Demon Hunters, is all about the Ordo Malleus, the Inquisitors who go out and keep the Imperium safe from the Chaos Demons. They aren't always nice about it, but it is at least an understandable organization. This book, on the other hand, Witch Hunters, is all about the Ordos Hereticus, the Inquisitors who comb through humanity and rout out heretics, witches, and mutants. And politicians, thought leaders, revolutionaries, protesters, people with big feet, undesirables, people who are too desirable, basically anyone and anything that could possibly jeopardize the status quo, as they are, quote, the guardians of humanity's future. And that is what I have right here. This witch hunter is part of a trio of witch hunter inquisitors Games Workshop made, all with different war gear. And as you might have noticed, that all three of these witch hunter models have the exact same symbol on their chest, the inquisitorial rosette. This little amulet gives them complete authority to do anything they want. You might also have noticed that they're all the same model. This was something Games Workshop dabbled with back in the day, and it does make sense. There are so many different war gear options available to the Inquisition that Games Workshop decided to just do the kit bashing for us. A Power Maul and Plasma Pistol, a Bolt Stake Crossbow and Power Sword, and my girl, the Inferno Pistol and Power Stake. And 100 other options. Literally, there are four pages of war gear options for the Inquisition, and they can take any of them. This dude on the cover, Burning Darth Maul, has the same loadout as my Inquisitor. The Inferno Pistol, a handheld melt -a weapon, it's a fusion gun that shoots beams of 10,000 degree energy that is absurdly overkill for melting plebs. And a power stake, an iron stick that immolates psychers on contact. No explanation on how it managed to do this, but I'm sure it's all very scientific. Also, doesn't this guy on the cover look a lot like Simon Pegg? Please leave a comment agreeing with me that he looks like Simon Pegg. And this is why I love old models like this. A lot of 40k is what you make of it. A space marine is a space marine is a space marine, and I might make up that my space marines do this or believe that or have funny hats, but this model is just dripping with story. The history of the Age of Apostasy, the rise and fall of the Temple of the Savior Emperor, the rule of Gog Van Dyer and the Age of Apostasy that necessitated the creation of Thought Police and the Witch Hunters, and the hilarious war gear they invented for them. I really like the Black Templar, and I always like to think of them as the good guy bad guys. Sure, they fight for humanity, but only in a literal sense. They aren't trying to make the world a better place, they just do whatever the Ecclesiarchy tells them to do. And this lady might give me a whole new lease on this army. A mean, nasty, uncaring, heartless, sadistic, unsympathetic good guy to tell my crusaders where to go and who to purge. This model is a little crunchy, but I bet there is a sweet model hiding underneath that shiny white metal body. It has a certain grim darkness to it. It's very medieval. It's not the Barbie doll Inquisitor from that new Chaos Gate game. <laughs> which I don't dislike, but it's a very different style to this one. This one is definitely based on the horrifying artwork found inside the codex. That is what I want to emulate with my paint job. And speaking of paint job, one of the tricky things with metal models is that they're kind of chromey. It's hard to see the details. And so I'm gonna give this model a Zenithal. I don't know how much I'll use the Zenithal in painting, but the Zenithal is gonna be super helpful to actually let me see what's going on on the figure. I primed using my favorite airbrush primer, Stino Res Black, and then a Zenithal of White, and after that the model really came to life. There, now I can see the black armor I have to paint. Now black is kind of impossible to paint, because black is black, it's the absence of light. If I really wanted to paint black, here's how I would do it. The way I'll do it is to make it shiny black armor with reflections of blue, like the Inquisitor from Dawn of War. I put black, blue, and white on my palette, then mix them together to make some gradients. To sell the black, I'll have to use 80% black and dark colors and just a little bit of light colors. I glazed my dark blue mixture all over the armor, letting the Xenothal poke through just a little bit so I can see where my highlights should go. Then I glazed pure black over most of the armor, shading the recesses. 
Then came the highlights, using the blues as my reflections on the tops of her thigh, chest, and arms. Then an edge highlight of light blue. I use this super sparingly. Most of every armor panel has to be black, or else it'll look like dark blue armor instead of black armor. And that is black armor. But Jay, it's blue! But, person that I just made up, it's blue light reflecting off of shiny black armor. Now for the leather. And for that, I took a brown paint and made some more gradients mixing in white and black paints. I gave the model a good old base coat of brown, just getting everything colored. Then I took my dark brown mixture and put this in the middle of every fold of material. Then I went even darker, shading the areas I shaded previously with an almost black mixture. Now onto the highlights. I kept this to the raised areas, doing a stippling action to create a texture. The armor is smooth, the leather is crunchy. Then another layer of highlights, depositing less paint than before. And then to really sell the leather, an uneven edge highlight and micro scratches all over the leather to make it look well-worn. In 40K, everybody wears leather, and yet there's no cows. Noodle that one out. And while you're noodling, why not check out our Patreon? We have a Miniature of the Month Club. This month's minis are the Vine Knights. The STLs are available and Patreon supporters can get a discount on physical 3D prints. And lots of high quality terrain STLs hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. We also have viewer model critique videos, a weekly hobby hangout live stream, and more. It's the best way to support us, so head on over to Patreon to get access to even more Eons of Battle. We also have merch, link in the description. BAM! The dark tealy blue next to the yellowish brown looks dope. This model is all right for 20 years old. Now I'm on to the face, and boy, what a face. This face is pretty terrible. Like, it's all there, cheeks and a nose and whatever is going on with the lips, but it's rough. A million hours of criticism have been published about the 2019 Sisters of Battle, which is weird because those faces are actually really good. This face will be a challenge. I'm gonna need my glasses for this. Better. I glazed on some red beige, letting the zenith all show through. Pinkish is a good start, then I glazed on a darker brown to at least make the front of the face stand out. Then I started to apply some highlights, focusing on the forehead and trying to actually give the model some cheeks and a jawline. I kept mixing more and more white into my paint to bring the colors up so I have a lot of contrast between the dark beige and the lightest highlights. I did the best I could, going back and forth with more light pink and more dark beige. I was able to paint on cheekbones and lips and eyes, but in the end, the face kinda kicked my butt. It's so little and crunchy. Well, oh, I gave it my best. Just gonna throw a little contrast paint on the hair. The hair is perfect for contrast paint. One coat and done. Next up, the fire. And fire is a tricky thing because it's not really a thing. It's a chemical reaction. It's not recreating a material, it's faking an effect. And to do this, I started out by base coating my flames white, then painting yellow on the majority of the flames, leaving just a little bit of white showing through closest to the fuel source. Then I painted orange at the end where the fire is leaving the barrel. Then I painted red on the tip and then blended that into the orange. Then on the very tippy tip, I painted black to represent the soot being cast off from the burning fuel. And that is four steps to good fire. The only thing left to do was the base, and I really like how the base turned out. To make it, I used a Games Workshop Necromunda base and some plastic card I had laying around. I have this diamond plate plastic card and I want to nest it into the recessed part of the base. To transfer this shape, I put a piece of painter's tape on the base, then rubbed a pencil over it, which left a dark impression of where the edge of the plastic is. Now I have my pattern. I can unstick this from the base and put it onto the plastic card. Then I cut it out knowing it would be a perfect fit. I use super glue to stick it in place and then trim the excess. Now it looks perfect from the top, but it's a little jank on the sides. So I filled in the holes with super glue and baking soda, then sanded it to perfection. To attach my lady, I clipped the metal peg so that it would become a pin, then drilled a hole, inserted my pin, and glued her down using lots of super glue. To paint the base, I didn't want to introduce any new colors, so I grabbed what was left on my palette and glazed it on. A combination of layers and colors should make for a very interesting modeled base, and not having any distinct shapes and patterns behind it will make the industrial base stand out even more. It's fun without drawing any attention away from the finished model. The only thing left to do is to paint the rim of the base black. This model is tons of fun. Learning all about the history of this particular branch of the Inquisition has got me pumped. She's lean and mean. With not an ounce of compassion in her, she burns everyone and anything she needs to in order to keep the Imperium safe. Teal shaded black and yellow tinted leather works really well together. She does have an adventurous swagger to her. It's a combination of cowboy leather duster, medieval armor, and Elizabethan hair. That's 40K in a nutshell. This model is not bad for being almost 20 years old. I did the best I could on the face. I spent an hour and maybe I could have done better on a second try. I need a lot more practice. And you know, the pale face with the white hair and the bluish armor, it kinda looks like a 40K version of Mom from Futurama. You know what? 
I can be okay with that. I really like Inquisitors. If anyone wants a good primer on the Imperium and how it operates, these two codexes are a good read. I think I might need to start a collection of Inquisitors. I have two right now, and three would make it a collection. And obviously I need them all. And the grand finale would be certainly the ultra rare 72 mm female Inquisitor from the short lived game, Inquisitor. Also, Games Workshop, make an Inquisition kill team. Come on, the work has already been done. Inquisitor henchmen, the acolyte, the sage, the warrior, the familiar, the penitent, the Cherusian. It's all right here. It's been done 20 years ago. Just copy, paste. We need a new Kill Team doubles box, Kill Team Raymond, Inquisition versus Demons. Make it happen. I'll be waiting here with my Witch Hunter. Thanks for watching.